Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ed3 podcast. We're exploring the future of education, and there's no one better to have on today than our guest. So excited to welcome a TikTok educator bringing Web3 and AI to Latin America. From her home in Peru, she's designing hippos, inspiring teachers, hanging with Gary Vee, and bathing Abby along with her dog. She's not working on the best practices in virtual education. She's publishing her own book on AI. And right now she's hosting a coming webinar as well on the future of AI and education. The warmest heart in Web3, one of my favorite people to chat with on Twitter. So excited to welcome Tatiana Torres. Welcome to the podcast. So happy to be here. It's always fun. You know, we've made interviews in Spanish and in English, but now is your time to challenge it's, myself. <laughs> my, it's it's so my time. turn to dig on YouTube to find that. I, I dusted off some old Spanish for Tatiana for an interview. I think your English is much better than my Spanish, but it's great to, to welcome you. I'm so excited to have you because you have this curiosity that I love in educators where you didn't just learn one thing and teach that. You're continuing to learn. So I'm really curious if you could start there. Like what drives this curiosity for you? And tell us, you know, a little bit about why you continue to learn. First, in, in virtual education, and then in graphic design, and then in Web3, and now in AI. So just talk briefly about kind of that continuing exploration. I was teaching people without realizing that I was doing it, because I, I was an entrepreneur since I was 16 years old. And can you imagine a, a young girl who is trying to sell you something online and to, to people maybe from 30 and more years. So they are like, you look like my kid. Like, <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing? So I always try to, to explain in a simple way what, I, what I'm doing. I try to believe in what I do. If I don't believe in what I do, I just can't teach it. Um, yeah. This is something that I just can't do. And when, when I prepare myself with my master's degree as a virtual educator, I discovered that all these years I've been teaching other people all my almost half of my of my of my life with my courses with online webinars but but then I I discovered that before I need or before teaching something I need to try it first that's why I'm I'm like I like to experiment a lot and yeah. I'm not afraid to to make mistakes we are now with this AI thing and I just jump in and try to research and create things around, like what we can do with that in education. Yeah. I know you're based in Peru and you've worked with teachers across Honduras, I think, and maybe Mexico. How are things different in Latin America? What should we know about experience with Web3 and AI? And, and what is education looking like with this new technology in your, in your community? Believe it or not, a lot of teachers don't know this technology yet. We maybe hear of it in, on, on social media or the news, but they are so afraid to try it. And I, I always share with them, if you don't try, you are always fear, feel fear about this new change, this new technology. And you have two paths, right? You can do nothing and, and just feel fear all the time about the changes or adapt really quick and try, learn and try to prepare your students for the future because you, uh, you have to step up for them. You have to be the first one. So how do you think that these tools like Web3 and AI that you're teaching them about can really change their classroom, especially, you know, if they're having issues maybe with Zoom or with other basic technology? How can this more advanced technology actually help? Do you see it changing education or providing different opportunities? Of course. Just yesterday, I was giving a class about digital badges, on-chain badges, and I was trying to explain to them what is the benefits to use it. Like, you can, and, and a student of mine who is also a teacher told me that is also a doctor and is a higher education teacher in the medicine school, told me, these badges can help me to use incentivize every time a patient is improving health. And about the Web3 with NFTs, for example, is a, is a great, great way. If you have an NFT, just to give a few examples, you can have a membership 
you can create a community who holds the NFT. I'm going to do like NFT diplomas as a collectibles too. Like every time someone finish your course, you can give them an NFT as an NFT diploma with a collectible differentiation. And, and yeah, that's only a few parts of how we can use this technology for it. Amazing. So, so you're teaching people one-on-one, -on -one, but you've also now created a book and you have a webinar. So the new book is out called Inteligencia Artificial para Docentes. And you have the webinar La Evolución de la Educación. So tell us a little bit about what inspired you to create these and sort of, you said, you, you know, you need to pe teach people step by step. So I'm curious who the audience is for these or the book and the webinar. Yeah, so both is for educators and educa educators who, who wants to learn new things, new trends, and are like curious enough to, I don't know how it works, but I would trust Tatiana to, to do it, right? Something like that. A lot of students tell me the same, like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I will trust you. You, I will follow the process. So what I'm doing with my, with the webinars is show them that this is not the future is now, like our students are super used to upgrade, to have digital assets, to go to the metaverse, to have digital things and, and digital personalities and digital clothing and so I'm saying this is not new for them. They are there already. So you need to be prepared to engage with, with your activities, with your projects. I'm not saying that you need to change everything. I'm just saying that you can take this new technology and adapt with your projects. These tools can make you a better teacher. So take it and I give them templates. I give them examples and I, I'm trying to do it myself first. Right. I don't teach only the concept because, you know, you have to know the path. There's a lot of things like how to create my own digital contract on Ethereum in it, for example. It's a step-by-step -step that, I, that I did already and I can be able to teach her other teachers now. I love how you're embodying like the learn by doing, right? Like you're, you're doing it yourself first and then you're sharing what you learned along the way for others. So, so that's a really great lead into the hippos. So one of the things people will see immediately if they connect with you on Twitter or on LinkedIn or TikTok is your hippo. So tell us a little bit about your hippo project and kind of why you started that and what that's taught you along the way. Hippo project is an NFT project that I started one year ago. It was on January 24, 2022. Uh, I decided to take a workshop, a creative workshop with Seth Godin and he challenged every student saying you need to create your daily, something that you do every day to practice, to show up. It doesn't matter if it's perfect. It doesn't matter if you consider that it looks like crap, just launch it, just do it. And I was thinking about it, how can, what can be my project? And I was a digital artist 10 years ago and just stopped my, my drawing journey for 10 years. And after that period of time, I decided to accept the challenge and create my own EPOs. So that's what I did and create EPO number one. And after a week, I have a bad memory. That's why I decided to mint my own EPOs, my seven EPOs from the, my first week. And that became my first collection. And then that's a friend neat. asked me, hey, I want to buy one of your EPOs. It looks so, so cute. And, and I <laughs> said, okay. And now it. I, I have my first sale and then another and another and, uh, and some of the artists and collectors from the Web3 space have some people. So Educator, bad. NFT artist, and you really got your, your big jump, as I recall, from TikTok, right? When you were doing your master's. Tell us about that, because I think that's a great example of what I would call build in public, which we don't have to think about for students. Maybe we think about for entrepreneurs, but tell us about how you might build a master's degree in wow. public. TikTok, for some people, is like, oh, I need to jump and create content for TikTok, but I was doing it like three years ago already. One of my biggest problems all my life was to be consistent with content. I was with my daughter at the time. She had like one year, one year of age, so little. And I was like, mom life, trying to prepare, you know, the food, baby food. 
And I was saying, okay, I will try to record the baby food, how I do it and upload on TikTok. And this is how I started. I was playing around with the platform, like how the filters work, how can I edit a text with this and that. And then I was stuck. I say, I was saying, I don't have ideas. I don't have the time to think what I'm going to record today and tomorrow and tomorrow. So I will document what I'm doing. I, I, at that time, I decided to go back to college and start study for my master's degree in virtual education. And they give me a bunch of things and, and, and tasks to do. And I say, okay, I'm going to record everything I'm doing in this master's and I share everything there. That's how my account became a, an educational account. Yeah, no, that's so fun. It's so fun to share along the way and, and people want to learn. And I'm curious, you know, one of the concerns we have about technology is always inequality, you know, where some people who have access are able to use it and get further ahead. And I know that, you know, inequality is an issue in the United States, in Peru, but how do you kind of think about, about kind of inequality issues around the t techniques you're learning or teaching, like Web3 and AI? Do you see it as, as a big problem facing students? And like, how does this technology make it worse or better? Or how do you kind of think about that? Oh, that's happened all my life. Like, I, like, I, I will give an example. Uh, a couple months ago, I was trying to learn animation to the animation. So I did my research. And all the schools were charging me $3,000 and above. I wasn't able for the moment to pay that amount of money. And I found a community where a teacher was teaching to the animation for $300. And that's, that was more accessible for me. So I, I take that. And I, I think that now it's different. Internet connects with you can connect with everyone. You can learn from everything. Like you have a newsletter and it's amazing. You create amazing content. And there is a lot of people like you sharing good things. Even you are like a, a more advanced at that college <laughs> right now with your information, like you're super quick. And we have the opportunity to, to explore that more quickly. And my English is another example. I learned listening to music and to series and, and movies. And now with Web3, I have Twitter spaces so I can participate and practice my English. Now I don't need to pay tutor, teacher to, to, to spend time here and, and try to create a conversation. Now I can generally know someone from another country like you, have an interview, have fun and practice my English. Um, so opportunities like that, now with this new technology is better. I have a students from Venezuela and they are, they don't have chat GPT. They don't have e-learning platforms. They can access to that. What we are doing is like giving them the files and sending by email. So, okay. You don't have access because your government or, or someone is blocking that, but we can send the material to you anyways. So there is no excuse right now to to learn something as you want, if you're willing to. That's amazing. Well, I'm curious about the language question. I know with AI, that's a, an issue is a lot of the AI models are trained on English, right? They're trained on the internet. Uh, how do you kind of approach that in a lot of your sessions? I'm sure people maybe are less strong in English, maybe native Spanish speakers. How do we get things more internationalized? I always, I have super bad grammar in English because all my English was with listening to other people, not writing. Um, I read books, but it's not, it's, it was my, my nightmare. Like if you ask me, Tatiana, write something in English, it will be my nightmare. But now with AI, I can have my, my main idea and AI can help me with that task. Mm. Right. And what I'm doing right now is. If I have a, a question or a, a, an article that I want to create, I only add the main things, prompts, it's called prompts. So I'm trying to create better prompts. You don't need to, to write like a huge amount of text to create a good article in AI. You only need a, a good prompt and the main ideas and, and the main instructions, right? to AI. 
So if you learn how to do that, it doesn't matter if you speak Spanish, English, AI will do it. And you also can like contrast with Google Translator. That's what I do all the time. Google Translator uh, sometimes translate better than AI, sometimes. Mm -hmm. But I try to, to use different kinds of tools and translators in order to have a good, that makes sense, right? The text needs, needs to make sense or, or sometimes I add human ideas too. So I mix all together. Well, tell me, you know, you're, you're thinking about the future. You're playing with new tools. What are you most excited about right now for the future of education? What gives you hope and excitement? Yesterday, I was in the McDonald's Metaverse event. Uh, and I think it's, it's incredible because here, there you can share your voice, your microphone, your camera, and you have an avatar and you have all this Web3 experience. Like I can give digital budgets there can give a speech. I can be like a speaker and give a class and people can go explore around. Fascinates. And I think also augmented reality is, it amazes me because I think it, it, if I'm a teacher who is a science and I have this body, I can create experience in, in augmented reality in my class and everyone have a phone or I can bring my own phone to the class and they can explore, they can like so this 3D above, it's amazing that, that it, I think is a good, good beginning for, for make more entertaining experiences for students. I know your webinar is coming up and your book is available. So tell us where we can find those and the best way to connect with you on social media. I'm doing a webinar. You can find it in education, educacionweb3.com. That's the website. And it's a free webinar. I will, I'm going to share what is the evolution of education. We all know that education is changing all the time. So what is going on right now? You will find out in that webinar. People can find you on LinkedIn, Tatiana Torres, as well as obviously on TikTok and Twitter. And you can find her NFT collection. So there's nowhere that Tatiana has not touched. But I think it's a great inspiration to see how we can learn while we're doing and share what we're learning along the way. And it's a great reminder, I think, for teachers to be constant students and learners as well. So Tatiana, any last thoughts or ideas you want to share with our audience before we sign off? Yes. Yeah, so sometimes you need to accept challenges in your life. A year ago, I was with Gary B, at tea with Gary B, and, and I asked him, how can I innovate in education using Web3 technology and NFT? And he, he said to me, well, create a course. Once, once your students finish that, that program, you create in collaboration with another artist, a diploma in a, in a form of NFT and will be a collectible diploma. It took me one year to make it happen, but now I'm working on it. <laughs> so sometimes it's good to accept challenges and to ask other people who maybe have more experience or know more than you. Don't, don't feel afraid to ask them. You can, you have here to, to Scott, me, and everyone who participates in this program. So feel free to always DM them. That's you don't perfect. have anything to lose. I think it's really important that we uh, talk with people around the world to learn how they're using technology and to make it more internationally inclusive. So I hope everyone who listens to this reaches out and connects with you. And we look forward to seeing what you're building next because it seems like you're always on the forefront of whatever's going to be the next big thing. So We'll be watching and thanks so much for joining us on the Ed3 podcast. Have a great day. The same and thank you everyone. Sending okay. a lot of love from Peru. Bye-bye.